I'm gonna tell you today why Bayonetta 3 is easily one of the best games you'll play this year, but also kind of the worst. And I have my reasons, and I think you may agree once you get to the nitty gritty of it all. So let me just tell you this right away. Bayonetta 3 stands on the pillars of two stellar games. At one point I can tell you that I thought that Bayonetta, at least the first one, was game of the year contender. Easily one of the most fun games, most innovative, most fun, most approachable games I've ever played. And this game, Bayonetta 3, betrays that. Because several times, several times in this game, they throw you into situations where you have no idea what to do, how to handle it, and knowing that you're going to die <laughs> at least three, four, five, six, seven, eight times till you really figure it out. That in itself is frustrating. Why would this game do that? They've had three games now to figure out how to create mechanics that make a game accessible. And they've done it successfully in the past. But for some reason in this game, they're like, yeah, <laughs> they'll figure it out. Let's let the kids grow up. I mentioned in my prior review um, of Arkham Knights that the gang didn't really, you know, uh, babysit you, didn't really take care of you, it kind of threw you in and expected you to learn how to play the game by following the models and following the guide, right? Well, this game often doesn't give you a guide. It may give you a notion or an idea of how to solve a problem, but it doesn't hand it to you at all. And then I go, mm, there's my lazy gamer brain again. Let me try this a different way. And what I found out by playing this game is that the most linear path is not the path you want to take. In any other game, you'd be going straight forward down a path and it's very obvious. But in this game, that's not the case. My biggest criticism of this game really is the story. The story is nonsensical. I really couldn't follow what was happening half the time and often characters are being introduced or brought in or dropped in or dropped out with really no reason. Like we get to meet a character called Cheshire and I go, all right, cool, that reminds me of the old games but instead it's a giant cat, but we don't really know where they came from, and no one's telling us why or where or how. We're just kind of thrown into the whole thing. And the story itself is very convoluted and honestly kind of weak, and it's not a reason to play the game. But, and here's the big but here, when you first pick up the game, you are thrown into roughly an hour of story where literally in that first hour of, I don't want to call it gameplay, uh, first hour of movie watching, <laughs> you get to play maybe like 20 minutes of actual video game. Like, I'm like, what, why? why? I don't know what's happening. I'm so confused. It's not great. <laughs> and I just want to play the game. And you know why I want to play the game? Because I know it's fun. Every single time I actually get to play the actual game, it was fun. It was so fun, so great. And I'm like, yo, this is why I love this series. Not this really long, contrived story. But, but there is a saving grace here. They do allow you to skip the cutscenes. And I promise you, if you skip the cutscenes, you won't really miss much. Uh, the one thing I will complain about is that in this story, they're doing a very contrived thing that we've seen over and over and over again over this last couple of years. And that's multiverses. Yes, Bayonetta. Has entered the realm of multiverses. The game has had a lot to do with time travel. Yes, that, that, that's that's been a thing. But now we're in multiverses, and I'm like, oh my god, are we doing this again? Oh my god, really? I mean, to be honest, the only worst thing is really getting on my nerves. Like everyone does it, and I'm not complaining that Bay Bayonetta did it because, not to take in a second, they kind of did it right. They kind of did it the perfect way. But in, in the multiverse thing, though, you know, DC's doing it, Marvel's doing it, Dragon Ball Z did it. You know what I mean? And, and, and quite frankly, I just wish that they would stop using it as a way to constantly push stories forward and create gaps and create issues that ruin an otherwise great storytelling mechanic. And that's why I'm saying Bayonetta did it right. Because as soon as I get to meet Neo, I'm calling this, I made this name up, but Neo Bayonetta, meaning like the alternate version of her, and she had this different mechanic that the other Bayonetta doesn't have, and this other Bayonetta doesn't use guns, and instead you have to actually figure out how to use her weaponry, it made the fun intensify times 12. I already love the way this game plays, I already love the way this game fights, 
but this just get, oh my god i had a small tiny baby orgasm yeah you know what i mean i was like oh my god this is awesome and she skates and she moves and she and she, she dips and she dives and she throws little slicey things at people it's so freaking phenomenal and I, it makes me happy that i'm getting to play this game you know uh, i'll say that too about the, the fighting mechanics they changed it in, in previous games the mechanics work completely differently and I kind of was frustrated at first, like, oh man, really, y'all get rid of this? Y'all get rid of this? I thought at first, when I first was reviewing this game, I was writing down, like, okay, they got rid of uh, the, the lollipops, they got rid of uh, the need to actually, like, you know, um, make your own mixtures, and really what they did was they put it under a different menu, and they made it, made it less vital, but it's still very vital to this game to constantly have lollipops and charging agents to give your character more um, HP, more magic powers, uh, more of everything. So it's still there, it's just not in the forefront like it was before. And I kind of like it, except for the fact that in order to do it right now in this game, you have to literally pause the game go and get a lollipop, and then go back into the game. And that does pull you out of the experience a little bit, but the, the, to be honest, it didn't really affect my experience all that much because sometimes I just needed it, and I go, okay, if this is real life, what would I do? <laughs> I would stop, I open the wrapper, I take a lick, I get my power kick, and then I go kick some more butt, and that's what I did. Again, the game really has done a good job to reinvigorate itself. The combat system, using the giant and often too large for scale monsters and abilities, uh, it was a bit much. Like, I couldn't see my sexy lady hit people in the face because she was too big for the screen. But in reality, that's what it would look like if we were playing the game. I also say that the game does a really good job of making use of limited graphic ability that, of the Switch. I don't think this game is getting ported to other systems, so that is sad for me because the game often looks like it was made for the Wii or, at times, the GameCube. And that's probably another complaint I have is that the game just doesn't look that great. I, I really want it to. Like, on, on the smaller screen, it looks great. But when I play it on my TV, when I play it on Twitch, it's not impressive. And that's unfortunate because Bayonetta's hot, baby. She is so freaking hot. I'm just going to say it. In every incarnation, she is hot. And I want to see those pixels bounce in 4K. And I don't know if it, if it will ever happen because that's just not where we're at anymore. You know, they, they, they put it out here, it looks like this, and we have to accept it. And that leads me to a point of, do graphics really mean that much to me? When a game is ultimately so much fun. Like this game will really throw you for a loop. When you think it's going one way, it goes another. When I'm thinking I'm just gonna battle and fight and button, button and mash, which you can't do in this game. People always say like, oh, uh, BLL's a button masher. It's not. <laughs> if you only button mash, you are going to lose. You have to constantly dodge. In fact, if anything I'm mashing, I'm constantly mashing the uh, the trigger buttons in order to constantly dodge and get out of things and activate witch time, which is a, which really is essential to fight some of these big overpowered monsters. And I'm just telling you, you can't just button mash this game and win. You're gonna get to a point where it will not work. It works for a little bit, but after a while, you gotta switch it up. You gotta use some kind of technique. And and the game really does shine when it, we bring those elements together. When you really understand, you have to mash the trigger button to dodge, use different techniques to battle, realize that different monsters react to different styles of fighting which you can switch between, uh, realize that you also have to charge yourself constantly to make sure that you're, you have enough ability to even beat the monster you're facing, and also understanding that this game is more complex than it looks. The game walks you through things initially and gives you a little bit of support, but once it realizes, yo, they got it, it lets you go, and you can get out there and do your thing. Bayonetta 3 is a force to be reckoned with, it's a lot of fun, it has a lot of flaws, but the fun that it brings in, the variety it brings in, the surprises it brings in, makes it worth it to me. At one point in the game, you become a kaiju, and you have to completely throw away everything you know about the game and fight as a kaiju. <laughs> and it's freaking dope. I mentioned earlier, when you get thrown into the alternate world for a little bit, and it's not a spoiler because it's just, you know, it's what it is. When you get thrown into the alternate world for a little bit, uh, the, the mechanics of the new Bayonetta you're, you're using is totally different from the other Bayonetta that you've, you're used to. And they don't explain anything about it. They just throw you in there and just tell you to figure it out. And once you do, it's awesome. But before you do, you do what I did, and you die uh, literally just trying to jump and, and get to one place to the other like eight times. And it's frustrating until, again, you realize I'm going at a linear path. This game isn't linear. What if What's over there? And you turn to the left, you turn to the right. 
Um, there's also a new system in, in the game that it kind of redirects you when you go in the wrong direction, which is helpful because you do do a lot of running between points in the game. And that's not something I remember from the old Bianetta games, but this one really does keep you on the path. But sometimes it won't help when you're going towards a monster and the only path is towards that monster. You gotta realize that there's more terrain here in the game. There's a lot more here going on. You gotta look at the whole scope before moving forward and that will get you where you need to be. So do not think linearly in this game. Think what's up, what's down, what's behind you, what's to the side, what's to the left, what's to the right. You know, that is gonna give you your answer. If you're wondering why you're lost, that's why. Again, this game did a really good job of making itself familiar, but also very different. Uh, difficult, but also fun. Challenging without handing you everything. But ultimately, this game did one thing that I love, and they made the priority entertainment. This game is entertaining. The story's not great. <laughs> the graphics aren't great. And those two things alone may give people pause. But once you realize how much fun you're going to have, you will not care. Because ultimately, they're called video games for a reason. They're meant to be fun. They're meant to be challenging. And Bayonetta 3 achieves that in spades. If you love video games, if you love playing, if you love fun, You'll love Bayonetta 3. And that's all I have to say. I highly recommend this game, but I will, will just warn you, you're playing a Switch game that is made for the Switch. <laughs> Keep that in mind. So the things you expect in these other AAA, um, PS5, Xbox series games, you're not going to get here. But what you are going to get is a good time. I know there was a lot of controversy around this game um, early in the year that I hope is dissipated uh, because this game should not be thrown away, this game should not be ignored, this game should not be boycotted, and I just hope that the cloud that hangs over the game doesn't ruin what could have been a phenomenal return to form, but also reinvention for a series that I personally love and appreciate as a gamer. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm Chris Thinks. I want to hear your opinion next. Let's talk about it. How do you feel about Bayonetta? I feel like Nintendo fans typically love her, you know, for one reason or another, or maybe two. 